uh, hello and welcome to the course on mechatronics so today we will learn unit number 5 that is frequency domain modeling and analysis i am dr ls dhamande from sanjini college of engineering koparga uh, we will initially see the syllabus of this particular unit so first of all we will see that it consists of the transfer function based modeling of mechanical thermal and fluid system then we will see the concept of poles and zeros then we will understand the stability analysis using Ruth Hartwig's criteria Bode plots introduction to Bode plot gain margin phase margin relative stability analysis in the frequency domain parameters we will understand the natural frequency damping frequency and damping factor and finally we will see the mapping of pole zero plot with damping factor natural frequency and unit step response so first we will try to understand that what is the actually importance of modeling any system so this is required to understand and control complex systems one must obtain quantitative mathematical models of these systems to analyze the relationship between the system variables because any system if you consider it will be having so many number of parameters so what is the effect of one parameter over the other and how different if i vary one of the parameter of it so what how other parameters will vary with this time that we have to analyze and therefore we need to have a mathematical relationship of all these different parameters of the system so because the systems under considerations are dynamic in nature the descriptive equations are usually differential it means definitely we are going to differentiate these uh, all the parameters in terms of time so we have to see the response of these uh, different parameters with respect to time so in this case what we are doing is uh, is a laplace transform can be used to obtain a solution describing the operation of the system so in practice the complexity of the systems and our ignorance of all the relevant factors necessitate the introduction of the assumptions concerning the system operation so we know that there are if you make a mathematical model of the system that mathematical model will be in terms of a differential equation so these differential equations are difficult to be solved and therefore to find out the relationship between input and output we are using the laplace transform which actually converting the differential equation into an algebraic equation so this uh, modeling when you are doing it so we have to find out the relationship between the input and the output so a term which is specifying us the in relationship between input and output is called as a transfer function now we will see that why why actually we need to study the transfer function so because it is easier and better to assess some things using classical techniques such as gain and phase margin and therefore we are going to use this transfer function approach to know the gain and the phase margin now uh, also we will see how to determine this transfer function so for determining this transfer function first requirement is that you should derive the differential equation means the governing differential equation of the system must be derived first then assume the initial conditions to be equal to zero and take the laplace transform of output as well as take laplace transform of the input so finally if you have to get a laplace transform function so it is the laplace transform of output by laplace transform of input so in this way you will get the transfer function now in order to determine how system behaves with respect to time whenever it is subjected to some disturbance or input and to understand behavior of the system mathematical models are required so these mathematical models are the equations which describes the relationship between input and the output systems can be made up of building blocks each building block is considered to have a single property for example a mechanical system can be considered to be made up of three major building blocks what are those three major building blocks so one is the spring mass and the damper these are the major three components of a mechanical system so spring has the property of the stiffness mass has the property of inertia and damper has the property of damping 
so likewise uh, in electrical systems also there are uh, some basic building blocks which is nothing but the resistor capacitor and inductor so for forming mathematical model it is required to consider the governing equation of each building block so for example if you see here there is a spring so if you apply a displacement to this particular spring it means if you extend it or if you contract the spring definitely there will be certain force that will be stored into this particular spring so if you have to find out how much is the force into that spring so force will be equal to k into x so k is nothing but the stiffness of it so if i apply x displacement to the spring having some stiffness so it is going to have certain force at the output similarly uh, if i have to move any block by some distance so i am applying some displacement or velocity or some acceleration so like if a mass has to be moved and if i apply some acceleration to this mass i will get the force so we can say that as per newton's second law of motion f is equal to m into a in general it is m into x double dot a. double dot stands for double derivative of this displacement with respect to the time so it is acceleration so f is equal to m into d2 x by dt square similarly in case of damper uh, what are the damping force you are getting that damping force is proportional to the velocity so damping force can be written as c into v where v is written as c into x dot and f is equal to c into dx by dt so in this case the block for this building block for this is will be equal to x dot is the input to this c is the damping coefficient of it and you will get the force damping force so if i consider now all these three components at a place so this is the mass this is the stiffness and this is the damper and some force is applied over here and according to that you are getting certain displacement here so equation of motion if you write for this it means simply what you are doing is uh, whatever the external force is applied and the internal resistance which will be given by the different components of this so if i make the uh, internal resistance offered by the different components like there will be uh, mass into acceleration inertia force will be there due to this mass then there is a spring force which will be equal to k into the displacement of it and uh, d means in this case it is a damping coefficient d into y dot because y is the displacement considered here so y dot will be the velocity and y double dot will be the acceleration so m into y double dot plus d into y dot plus k into y will be equal to f that is external force so this is the equation of motion for this particular simple mechanical system so if i assume the initial conditions to be zero and if i take the laplace transform of both sides of this then i will get this equation being converted into this form so if you take the laplace transform of this you will get this equation m into y double dot plus d y dot plus k y equal to f this will be converted into m into s square of y of s plus d s into y of s plus k into y of s equal to f of s now our output is nothing but the y of s that is displacement and input is the force applied to this particular system so i have to find out the transfer function that means how much uh, force i am applying and how much displacement i will get displacement is my response output and input is nothing but the force so i will get this transfer function as 1 upon m s square plus d s plus k so like this, this is nothing but the uh, transfer function obtained for the mechanical system similarly now we will see the building blocks of a thermal system so in this case you can see this is a suppose one of the wall maybe a for a boiler uh, this is the inner inside of the boiler and this is the outside atmospheric temperature uh, outside of the boiler so there will be heat transfer that will be uh, heat will be transferred from the input to output side so input temperature is t1 and output temperature is t2 okay and this uh, thermal system can be compared with the electrical system wherein this is the resistance this is the current flowing through this particular resistor and this is the voltage difference across this so if we see the analogy of this whatever the current is flowing through the electrical circuit the same is the heat transfer q flowing through it voltage is nothing but the temperature difference t1 minus t2 and resistance this is the electrical resistance similarly there will be thermal resistance so as we write uh, for a electrical system v is equal to ir so resistance if you have to find out for the electrical system it will be voltage by current so similarly we have to find out the thermal resistance for this so this rth will be equal to t1 minus t2 that is nothing but corresponding to the voltage here in case of electrical circuit it is temperature difference in case of thermal system so t1 minus t2 divided by q here it was i current flowing through this and this is heat flow q so 
generally there are different modes of heat transfer uh, like conduction convection and radiation so if you consider the conduction in a slab so in that case conduction or the heat transfer rate is given by k which is the thermal conductivity of this wall area surface area through which that heat will transfer t1 minus t2 upon n this is the expression for heat transfer so q will be again written in this in this form like t1 minus t2 upon l upon k into a so it means this l by k a is nothing but the thermal resistance of this particular wall similarly for hollow cylinder heat transfer is given by 2 pi k l in bracket t1 minus t2 upon ln of ro by ri where ro is the outer radius of the cylinder ri is the inner radius of the cylinder k is the thermal conductivity of that particular cylinder l is the length of the cylinder and this is temperature difference inside t1 is the inside temperature of the cylinder and t2 is the outside temperature of the cylinder so thermal resistance for a hollow cylinder can be written as ln of ro by ri upon 2 pi kl similarly now uh, if you consider the heat transfer due to convection so q is equal to h a delta t that means h into a into t1 minus t2 so h is the convective heat transfer coefficient and a is the area of through which the heat is flowing so this can be written as t1 minus t2 upon 1 by h a it means in this case the thermal resistance for a convection heat transfer it is 1 upon h into a similarly there is another uh, building block in the thermal system that is thermal capacitance so thermal capacitance is a measure of storage of heat in the form of internal energy in the system if q1 is the rate of heat flow into the system and uh, q2 is the rate of heat flow out of the system then the rate of change of internal energy will be q1 minus q2 and increase in internal energy means there is increase in the temperature therefore the rate of change of internal energy can also be written as m dot into c into delta t that is what m c delta t so we can equate these two so q1 minus q2 will be equal to mc delta t so this q1 minus q2 will be equal to c into delta t where this c is nothing but m dot into c that is nothing but called as thermal capacitance so uh, let us try to understand a very simple uh, model of a thermal system so in this case a closed insulated vessel filled with liquid and contains an electrical heater immersed in the liquid so heating element is contained within the metal jacket that has a thermal resistance of rhl so thermal resistance of vessel and its insulation is rla heater has a thermal capacitance of ch and liquid has a thermal capacitance of cl so heater temperature is th and that of the liquid is tl this is assumed to be uniform due to this mixer the mixer is provided so that the temperature of the uh, liquid inside this container will be assumed to be constant so rate at which the energy is supplied to the heating element is qi so now we have to find out the relationship between the output and the input so in this case output is nothing but the temperature of the liquid and input is the heat supplied that is heating element is being supplied with certain energy so that relationship we have to find out so here we can find out first of all the equation of th in terms of the tl th and qi like you will get th is equal to 1 upon ch into rhl in between bracket tl minus th plus 1 by ch into qi similarly tl will be equal to 1 upon cl into in bracket th minus tl by rhl minus tl by rhl so if we take the laplace transform this equation number 1 and determine the equation of ths and then take the laplace transform of equation 2 and determine the equation for tls and substitute the equation for ths in it then we will get the transfer function between output and input that is tl of s by qi of s so now we will see the building blocks of a hydraulic or the fluid system so here we can see there is a, a first 
building block that is hydraulic resistance is considered so uh, in fluid system in general there are three building blocks which can be considered to be equivalent of electrical resistance capacitance and inductance for hydraulic systems volume flow rate is the input which is equivalent to current and uh, <coughs> and pressure difference is the output which is equivalent to the potential difference voltage in the electrical systems so you can see here there is a one pipe is shown and there is a wall the pressure p1 on the input side of it pressure p2 at the output side of it and there is a certain flow flowing through this particular pipe that is q similarly here there is some uh, sudden change in the flow passage is specified there is sudden reduction change in cross section so this is input side pressure output side pressure so pressure difference is going to be there and accordingly flow rate of the system will be there so here whenever the fluid is flowing through the pipe it comes across a wall or a sudden decrease in the cross section then the hydraulic resistance will be present so for fluid systems pressure difference is directly proportional to the discharge that is p1 minus p2 is proportional to the q and if i remove this sign of proportionality so p1 minus p2 is equal to r into q it means this r here is nothing but the hydraulic resistance which is equal to p1 minus p2 by q similarly now we will see uh, the next building block that is hydraulic capacitance so you can see here there is one tank there is a inlet flow to this tank there is outlet flow from this tank here there is a wall at the outlet and uh, it yet is specifying the particular height of this tank so definitely this tank uh, it is possible to fill this particular tank if this supply of the quantity of the liquid to this tank is more than the flow which is taken out from this tank so that means when the q1 is more than q2 so it is a term uh, this capacitance is a term which is used to describe the energy stored within the fluid whenever it is stored in the form of potential energy so in this figure you can see that uh, q1 is uh, fluid supplied and q2 uh, is the volume flow rate out of the tank such that this q1 and q2 is means q1 is more than q2 so the rate of change of volume of the liquid in the tank will be definitely q1 minus q2 now the volume flow of liquid in a tank that is v is equal to a into h so area of the cross area of the tank and height so that gives us the volume of liquid in this tank so rate of change of volume of this particular tank if i define outside i will differentiate this a into h with respect to d by dt so d by dt of this a into h now i am equating this rate of change of volume of the liquid in the tank which is being uh, actually dependent on supply of fluid and taken out fluid q1 and q2 so these two i am going to equate so q1 minus q2 is equal to d by dt of a into h we will also know that this uh, pressure difference means inside in uh, pressure over here and pressure over here at the output so p1 minus p2 is equal to nothing but the p pressure acting over there on the tank which is equal to rho g h and therefore we get this h is equal to p by rho g now using this uh, equation 4 we are calling this as equation number 4 for h and uh, this equation number 3 we got for q1 minus q2 into d by dt d by dt of a into h so i am putting this value here of uh, h is equal to p by rho g in this equation so q1 minus q2 will be equal to d by dt of a into p by rho g now same is being transferred on this side so q1 minus q2 is equal to a by rho g is taken outside as a constant and d p by dt so q1 minus q2 will be equal to c into dp by dt so where this c is nothing but the hydraulic capacitance which depends on cross sectional area of the tank then density of the liquid and g gravitational constant now the 
third building block of hydraulic or the fluid system is the hydraulic inertance so consider here a pipe through which the fluid is flowing and uh, a particular control volume is being contained between the section 1 1 and 2 2 now see uh, the pressure p1 and p2 be the intensities of pressure at section 1 1 and 2 2 so the force at section 1 1 is equal to p1 into a and force at section 2 2 is p2 into a so the net force on this control volume is equal to p1 minus p2 into a so we are marking this as equation number one so now according to the newton's uh, second law the force is equal to mass into acceleration so i will write the mass into dv by dt that is change in velocity per unit time that is acceleration so using this uh, 1 and 2 i will write p1 minus p2 into a is equal to m into dv by dt so mass of fluid contained in the control volume now is calculated by m is equal to rho into volume where this m is equal to again we will write uh, rho into a into l now this value of m that is rho into a l will put in the equation number 3 over here so we will get p1 minus p2 into a equal to rho a l dv by dt so they are working this as equation number 4 so we know that the discharge q is nothing but equal to area and velocity area of the pipe and velocity of the liquid which is passing through that particular pipe so if i differentiate this uh, q with respect to t so it is dq by dt will be equal to a into dv by dt so now we have to got this equation here that is uh, rho into dv by dt is here rho a l dv by dt so i will replace this a into dv by dt by dq by dt so we are equation number four becomes p1 minus p2 into a equal to rho l dq by dt so p1 minus p2 is equal to now i will take this a on the right hand side so rho l by a dq by dt now p1 minus p2 again i will write equal to i into dq by dt where this i is nothing but rho into l by a and this is called as hydraulic inertance okay so next we will see the how we can model a hydraulic system because initially we have seen the basic building blocks of this hydraulic system now we will try to make the equation of uh, this particular system so here in this case it is given to develop a mathematical model for a hydraulic system which is shown in this figure so this is supply fluid q1 fluid uh, flowing out from this is uh, q2 there is a wall provided here and this is nothing but the height h of this particular tank so what are the building blocks which are available with us uh, here in this case are hydraulic resistance so hydraulic resistance it gives us the p1 minus p2 equal to r into q this is the first equation then hydraulic capacitance so q1 minus q2 equal to c into dp by dt that is second equation of capacitance so just now we have seen it also the pressure difference can be written as p1 minus p2 is equal to p is equal to rho g h and uh, for wall also this pressure difference if i write on the input and output side of this wall so p1 minus p2 is equal to r into q2 resistance thermal uh, this uh, hydraulic resistance into q2 so this is nothing but equal to rho g h so from this i will get the value of q2 which is equal to rho g h by r now this is to be put it into equation number two because my aim is he the here to know the output h in terms of input that is q1 so i have to find out the mathematical relationship between q1 and h therefore i am specifying here the input is q1 output is h and i have to find out this relationship between q and h so for that actually i am trying to make the uh, substituting the value of other parameters in terms of h and q1 so here i got q2 which is equal to rho g h by r i have to put into this equation number two so this equation number two becomes q1 minus rho g h by r is equal to c into dp by dt so it means i have removed this q2 term from here and just i have kept the q1 now again i will write p is equal to rho g h so q1 minus rho g h by r this expression again i am writing here is equal to c into 
now dp by dt so p is equal to rho gh so i am putting the value of dp over here as a rho gh so rho g are the constants that will be taken away and dh by dt so rate of change of height with respect to time now putting the value of this c that is your uh, capacitance which is equal to a by rho g in this above equation so if i put that i will get this expression as so c will be replaced with a by rho g and this is already rho g is there into do by d by dt of h so rho g rho g will get cancelled out so q1 minus rho g h by r is equal to a dot dh by dt now i am rearranging this term so i am writing this a dh by dt first then plus rho g by r into h minus q1 is equal to 0 again i can make the simplification of this like i i can replace this a from here is divided by a so the a term will be removed from here and it will be a additionally here then q1 by a will be there so this is the mathematical model for this particular system now if i have to find out the transfer function for this then i have to assume all the initial conditions to be zero and take the laplace transform of this particular equation so after taking the laplace transform definitely this uh, time domain equation will be converted into s domain so when it is a single derivative h by d h by dt so it becomes s into h of s plus this will be rho into g rho into g by a into r into h of s is equal to 1 by a into q1 of s so transfer function if i have to find out i have to find out output by input output is h of s input is q1 of s so accordingly i will be getting this uh, so this there will be a term rho additionally here so r upon a into r of s r into s plus g into rho so this is what is the transfer function that we have obtained mathematical model and the transfer function we have obtained for the hydraulic or the fluid system now we will talk about the poles and zeros in the transfer function so poles and zeros are the properties of transfer function which characterize the differential equation and provide a complete description of the behavior of the system so you will come to know uh, when you plot these uh, poles and zeros you will come to know about the behavior of this particular system so poles of a transfer functions are the roots of characteristic equation in the denominator of a transfer function so poles can be obtained by finding out the roots of denominator of transfer function so transfer function will be having numerator and denominator so if i take the denominator term and if i find out the roots of that characteristic equation i will get the poles similarly if i take the numerator part of the transfer function and find out the roots of that equation i will get the zeros of the transfer function we will see uh, with the help of some example like there is one example like this is one transfer function s plus 1 upon s square plus 4s plus 3 so here denominator is s square plus 4s plus 3 equal to 0 it means i am considering this as a characteristic equation so when i try to get the roots of this equation that is nothing but the poles so for finding out the poles i will uh, find the roots of this equation so it the roots of this equation will be s plus 3 s plus 1 that is equal to 0 it means if i equate this s plus 3 equal to 0 so s is equal to minus 3 or s equal to minus 1 are the roots of this so these are the poles now zero so i will take the numerator term that is s plus 1 and I, when i get the roots of this so it will be s is equal to minus 1 so this is nothing but the zero of this particular transfer function so there are two poles and one zero for the transfer function let us take one more example in this case ts is equal to s plus 1 upon s square plus 2s plus 3 so denominator of this is s square plus 2s plus 3 if i try to get the roots of this equation directly i cannot get the roots as i got it over here so i will be using uh, this equation to find out the roots so minus b plus minus c dot b square minus 4 ac upon twice a assuming that this is a x square plus b x plus c form of equation so when i put this value of b as 2 then uh, a as 1 and c as 3 I will get this root as minus 2 plus minus 2 in under root minus 2 by 2. So, simply writing this S1 and S2, two roots of this equation as minus 2 plus 2 in under root minus 2 divided by 2, and this is minus sign here. So, poles will be again, I will just divide this 2 by 2, so it will be minus 1 plus in under root of 2i because minus is there in the under root, so it is minus 1 in under root means i square, so outside under root it will be i. So imaginary root is here and S2 will be equal to minus 1 minus under root of j 
so these are the two roots we got so these are nothing but the poles of this transfer function and for zeros i will get this s plus 1 a numerator i will equate this s is equal to minus 1 so this is zeros of this particular transfer function now we have to mark these transfer functions so we will be considering this uh, imaginary axis and this real axis uh, suppose uh, in this for in the first uh, transfer function we got two poles so i am marking it as a p1 and p2 so p1 is minus 1 so p2 is minus 3 so this is minus 1 so i will get this p1 here and uh, p2 is minus 3 so i will be getting p3 here okay now z1 that is again minus 1 so p1 and z1 that is again at the same location now p3 which is i got in from this transfer function now so i have to plot for this system so this system is different one this is another different system so now i will mark it with this p3 that is minus 1 plus root 2 of j so this is p3 will be marked here so minus 1 here for the x axis and for the y axis it is root 2 which may be around 1.44 and p4 the fourth uh, point is minus 1 minus root 2 j so this is p4 okay and z2 is again minus 1 for this so z2 will be again here only so like this we have plotted this zeros and poles and zeros of this particular function so here we have seen how we have plotted the different poles and zeros now uh, the important thing about these uh, poles of system and damping and as you can see uh, which you can see here the relationship is shown uh, also we will talk about the location of pole and zeros few important points so if the values of the poles and zeros do not contain imaginary part then they lies on real axis that is this is your real axis and uh, if the values of the poles and zeros do not contain real part they will lie on the imaginary axis so if their values are complex containing real and imaginary part they will lie on the s plane that is what we have seen in the previous uh, slide uh, p3 and p4 like this here p3 and p4 so this is nothing but called as s plane this is s plane so important characteristic of this uh, poles is that so closed loop pole of system should always lie on the left side of the s plane for the system to be stable so it means if your poles are lying in this part of the plane it means we can say that the system is stable now uh, you can see uh, there are five different uh, systems and their uh, poles are marked over here so we can see uh, the pole location and the response of that system so for example here we can see here uh, this one is the point system one and uh, this is the response of that system the second system is with a green color here this is the response of that system now this response nothing but uh, you can say that uh, suppose if it is a mechanical system so it is uh, we are observing the output as a displacement so displacement is the output and x is the uh, x axis is the time so how your displacement will change with respect to time that is nothing but the response so this is the response for the second system and this is the third system which is stable one so you will find out that it will overshoot initially and then it becomes stable continuously constant value so it is stable after some time and then similarly this is fifth system on imaginary axis which is completely unstable okay so also we can see here uh, for a mechanical system suppose zeta is nothing but a damping factor that is c by cc so if c zeta is more than one so your uh, this is your imaginary axis this is your real axis so the, when the zeta is more than one this will lie on the left side of this imaginary axis that is on in the s plane it will lie these uh, poles two poles of this particular system and the response of the system will be like this so it is called as over damped system and now we will see when the zeta is equal to zero means when there is no damping that time the poles will lie on the imaginary axis and it is nothing but undamped condition so it is an unstable kind of response you will find out so in this diagram now uh, your zeta will lie between zero to one okay it means it is less than one but it is more than zero so you are uh, you will get the imaginary roots in this case complex roots so it is again lying in the s plane so this is how you can call it as stable system so this is nothing but called under damped system so this way you will get a response of that under damped system and in this case when zeta is equal to one that is called as critically damped condition so you will get single root in the real plane 
but in this stable condition so you will get the response of this particular system will be like this now uh, here in this diagram the effect of damping on system response is shown so like for the different value of zeta equal to 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 uh, 0 0.4 7 1 and 2 like this they have shown that for value less value of zeta you will have more number of oscillations and it will get stable after some time while if there is a damping present in the system uh, amplitude of this system will decrease early and it will get stable quite early so this way in each case the damping value is increasing and the response is more stable obtained in this case so thank you very much we will look into the details of other content in the next video thank you thank you very much mm -hmm.